So let's check the label of our APC power supply. My system is very quiet, but this thing, listen to it. Yeah, the noise is not high, but it's very annoying. And the airflow itself, it seems reasonably high. So hopefully our replacement will not be in vain and the airflow will stay comparable. And by the way, when you disassemble it, mind that you need a very narrow and long screwdriver because these holes are quite deep. Typical PH2 will work. Okay, so we disassembled this APC power brick and this is the reason why we disassembled it. This fan, which is luckily 12 volt fan, because usually this APC power bricks, from what I've seen, they use 24 volt fans and this one is 12, this is good. There are many PC case fans which are 12 volts, so this can be replaced with those. And 24 volt is like commercial standard for industrial applications and very, very little fans on the market you can actually find with 24 volts. We'll try to replace it with Noctua. This one is 60 by 25. We'll measure whether the noise is lower and whether the actual airflow is comparable because high airflow is actually needed here. Hopefully we can replace it and the end result will not be as loud as this one is. Three pin, typical connector here. By the way, since we disassembled, let's check the battery in case we need to replace it. Let's go to Noctua and let's go check their fans. Okay, 200, 140, 120, 92, 80, 60. Nice, they seem to have something. And FA6, they seem to have only one model, which is 60 mm, but it should work for us. It's 60, 25. Nice, three pin, 3000, 24, 16. RPM, this should work. They have 5 volt version, 5 volt PWM, 12 volt PWM, and 12 volt flex. Looks like the flex will be the one we need because it's 3 pin. Great! Noctua, an F, A6, 60 by 25. The fan itself. Additional cords, 3-pin NAAC1, I think that's the Molex, right? Get the power from the Molex cord, low noise adapter, another low noise adapter, and the extension cable. Nice, it looks like the fans are exactly the same size, however, looks like the connectors are different and the actual color profile check this out black red yellow black yellow red <laughs> so the profile is a little bit off it looks to me that apc uses some proprietary solution here unfortunately so this is the typical three pin header will this work i'm afraid to break it. Let me actually try it. So we can use this connector which currently supplies 12 volts. No, nah, it doesn't work. Either the connector is not good or the color profile is off, which is definitely true. Let's try the Noctua. Yeah, it works right away. We need to cut the cable and we need to attach this proprietary connector to this Noctua. Unfortunately, this NFA6 does not have this Omnijoin connector set inside, which the NFA8 had in the previous video. Like the small connectors, you can clip them and they pierce the cable and like a quick join. You don't need to do any soldering. This one does not have it, but we can try and use this extension cable. We'll cut it, try even if it works. If not, then we'll assemble it back, we'll solder it back, and we'll use the old fan the way it is, so loud, but anyway, this should work, this should work, so we just need to match colors to colors and uh, try them out. And just as expected, the Noctua fan connector wouldn't go in. Tried it multiple times, even if the color profile was good, the connector is 
not good so basically what we have to do we need to disattach this connector from here the proprietary one connect it to the Noctua and then connect it to that board before we do that I want to use this extension cable and to connect it to this fan just to try it on the Noctua fan adapter and just to see how both of them work how both of them compare and we'll be testing them on the Noctua NAFC1 that's a nice pretty simple basic Noctua fan controller you need to connect it to your PC though so yeah you need to connect it to the motherboard okay let's go and do it we'll cut this and the extension cable the Noctua one we'll need more of this side so let's cut it approximately somewhere here good adda adda corp we'll call this fan an adda so clean the ends of this adda fan and the extension from Noctua we'll try to connect color by color and then try if it works all right all right I just twisted the cables together without any soldering we don't need any soldering right now this should be enough let's try it hopefully it should work there's no other way nice I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it's very loud. I can feel the vibration already. The airflow is, is very substantial, so I get a lot of air. So, okay, let's do some testing and see how it actually compares to the Noctua. I have added a 3M33 plus insulator here. The electric tape works really well with this type of tasks. So, speaking about the price, the Noctua costs around $22. It's not cheap, but not very expensive either they seem very very similar exactly the same size exactly the same standard they seem to have the very same number of fins even so seven fins here seven fins here except the motor the motor here looks a little bit bigger this motor is smaller in size so technically if it blew with the same number of rpm this would move more air because the fins are a little bit longer but otherwise it's very similar let's try to switch them on and have a subjective feel I have moved the microphone a little bit closer so we can actually feel the difference in sound so Noctua let's connect it you can definitely hear it very soft not annoying and something very similar to my PC case a little bit louder due to the fact that it's a low diameter fan well I think you can hear it it's much louder it's much louder however the airflow is much stronger as well one interesting thing the vibration can you hear it So the vibration is very annoying so this is sennheiser mkh416 a very sensitive microphone so let's do the comparison and the nocturne much 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 more quieter let's check the numbers So let's use our makeshift test bench to measure the airflow. Very weird way to measure, but still we can do it. We've got kilometers per hour. Let's find the best spot for the Noctua. It's around 10. 10.3. 10 
9, 10.3 kilometers per hour. There's the best spot. We don't have a proper aerodynamic chamber, but we can do it this way still. I've seen 11 there, yeah. So 10.7, 10.7, let's say 11. 11 seems to be fair. Trying our add a cooler. which right away gives us 17. That's a lot. 13, 19. I've seen 19 there. It's very hard to tame this airflow. The numbers are all over the place. But I seem to get 15, 16, 17 on pretty recurrent basis. I've seen 19 one time, but couldn't repeat that. Probably that was some perfect angle. Looks like 16 is the number. Noctua gave us about 10 to 11 kilometers per hour, while the Edda gave us about 16, 17, 15 kilometers per hour. This method is not perfect, but it clearly shows that this cooler is considerably more powerful and produces more airflow. However, for this application I'm using it for, I don't think I'm giving that much stress to this APC PSU, so I think this will suffice. Like, I value my sound very much, I value my system to be quiet, and I'm willing to take the risk of using a lower RPM fan, a more high-quality fan that is not as powerful but produces way less noise. I'm willing to take this risk, and I will definitely replace it. If not for the vibration, I think this could actually be used if you use some sound dampeners or something like that, that this vibration does not go strictly directly into the case, maybe it would work. If you can use some dampeners, Noctua even provides those, and these are not even here, like it's just plastic to plastic, so you, you've seen that, you, you've heard that vibration and how bad it is. Yeah, it's a good fan, produces a lot of airflow, but it's just too damn loud, so yeah. We'll replace it with this and maybe after a year or two or three I'll tell you whether it worked out and whether everything is fine. The only one thing left is we take the Noctua and we replace the fan header with this proprietary one. We assemble it back and we test how it works. Mm, it's almost painful to do this. <laughs> Ow. Looks like twisting these cables is enough, you don't even need to solder, they are not as sensitive as audio cables, and just this 12 volt cable looks like, you can just twist them together, it should work just fine. It's also better than clipping them together, like in the previous video I've done with that Noctua adapter set, because if you clip them together, then you cannot remove, like you have to cut them again, but if you twist them, you can always untwist them, and you can save the length, like this proprietary adapter you see it's not very long so if you mess with it a couple of times you've got no cable left so yeah and easy to reuse if you twist them and maybe i'll use a little bit of soldering just to make it more reliable but i think even without soldering it should work just fine so i've done a little bit of soldering and uh, let's connect it and see how it works so i have loaded up the system for about 600 watts and this fan is on and as expected it's almost not audible. I can hear it, but it's, the noise is lower than my PC case, which is great because previously it used to be the other way around. This was very loud. Now I can feel the airflow and I can hear no noise, which is great. This experiment is very successful. And it switches on at about 600 watts because when it's 500 watts, it's not even switched on. So it only switches on on some specific threshold and even then when it switches on it's 100% right away which makes me think that there is plenty of headroom because I can feel the airflow and it's cold. So it has been two and a half years and this contraption works just fine. You can replace it no problems whatsoever. My room gets quite hot in summer. In summer gets up to 30 degrees Celsius and uh, the load is high 800 watts, 900 watts or close to the limit that this block can handle. So no problems, uh, you can use lower RPM fan and it works just fine. Uh, interesting thing also is the fan switches on when the load on the block is about 500 to 600 watts. Until it reaches 500 or 600, the fan does not switch on. And when it switches on, 
it always goes straight to 100% load. So probably a suggestion to the manufacturer, maybe some kind of variable RPM could make sense if the load is like five, 600, or maybe the temp regulation can do this. So you can, you don't need to do 100% load right away, straight up in places where it's obviously not needed. So the temperature is not high and you just switch it on so it makes so much noise. So maybe only on the highest load, it could make sense to put it to the highest RPM. But that's just a suggestion. In general, this fix worked and that's great.